Hello everyone! In this tutorial we're going to be covering some common carbocation rearrangements, mainly 1,2 hydride shifts and 1,2 methyl shifts. But before we get started, it's important to remind ourselves that carbocations are very unstable on their own. And in fact, certain carbocations are more unstable than others. Let's first investigate this phenomenon before we can fully understand what's going on in a 1,2 hydride shift or a 1,2 methyl shift. I know this is likely review for many of you, but on the screen here I've put four different carbocations, and I want you to not only rank which carbocation is most stable to least stable, but also understand why there's a difference in stability of the carbocations shown. As you go ahead and rank the carbocations on screen from most stable to least stable, I want to remind you that alkyl substituents that is, substituents containing a carbon chain, are electron donating groups. All the carbon atoms shown have a formal charge of positive 1, and that's why we call them carbocations. It's a good exercise to go ahead and review your gen chem knowledge by verifying that all the carbons in the center of the diagrams do indeed have a formal charge of plus 1. You can also see that alkyl substituents labeled R in the diagrams, are donating electron density to the carbocation centers. Therefore, we can rank which carbocation is most stable based on how much electron density is being donated to it. The more electron density donated to a carbocation, the less severe the partial charge on that carbon. And charges that are less severe are, generally speaking, more stable. There's a lot more to be said in the topic of carbocation stability. For example, your textbook or instructor may want you to know this relative stability of vanillic carbocations, or carbocations attached to an aromatic ring. Consult your textbook or instructor, or perhaps a future video I make on more complicated examples of determining relative carbocation stability. A general rule of thumb, though, is that if there are resonance structures that allow electrons to be donated to your carbocation that is generally a more stable structure than one that does not have resonance structures that allow electrons to be donated. So now that we've reviewed the basics of carbocation stability, we can get on to the pertinent topic of how these shifts occur and predicting when they will occur. There are two basic criteria in determining whether a carbocation rearrangement will occur. Firstly, the reaction mechanism must have a carbocation intermediate. This is true of nearly all SM1 and E1 reaction mechanisms. However, if you don't know what that terminology means yet, don't worry. You'll cover it later in your organic chemistry career. The point is, if your reaction mechanism has an intermediate where there is a carbocation, a rearrangement could possibly occur. In order to understand the second criterion for a carbocation rearrangement, we need to understand why the rearrangement occurs. A carbocation rearrangement occurs to make the molecule more stable. And as we already discussed with carbocation stability, some carbocations are more stable than others. Therefore, carbocation rearrangements, such as 1,2 hydride shifts and 1,2 methyl shifts, change the carbon that bears the positive charge. A 1,2 hydride shift that changes the carbocation from a carbocation on a secondary carbon to one on a tertiary carbon will make the overall structure more stable, because a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation. So essentially what we are doing with these carbocation shifts is we are changing which carbon has the positive charge. If we can take the carbon that has the positive charge in the initial intermediate and rearrange it into a more stable form, such that a different carbon that is more stable as a carbocation has the positive charge, then one of these rearrangements will occur. Let's go over a few visual examples of 1,2 hydride shifts. A common test question is to give a mechanism and ask if a carbocation rearrangement will occur, and if so, how it will occur. On the screen here, I've provided a sample mechanism, and we're going to go over and see if a carbocation rearrangement will occur 
and if so, we will perform such arrangement. We can already see that the mechanism has an intermediate carbocation, which meets the first criteria for a carbocation rearrangement. The second thing we need to check is if a rearrangement will actually make the molecule more stable. In this mechanism, you can see that we start off with an intermediate that is a secondary carbocation. However, if we perform a 1,2 hydride shift, we can actually change where the positive charge is located and make a tertiary carbocation. As reviewed before, tertiary carbocations are much more stable than secondary carbocations, and therefore this rearrangement will occur. If we look at what's happening in a 1,2 hydride shift in more detail, we can see that a hydrogen atom is essentially exchanging which carbon it's bonded to. In this rearrangement, the carbocation acts as an electrophile, and the nucleophilic electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond will be attracted to that electrophile and switch where the hydrogen is bonded to. In the new structure, you can verify using formal charges that the carbocation has indeed changed from the secondary carbocation to the tertiary carbocation. Let's do another example. In this example, we have a long chain of carbons, and we see that the intermediate in this mechanism does indeed form a carbocation intermediate. However, this long chain is fairly symmetrical. So if we do a hydride shift, we notice that the carbocation will change position, but it'll merely change position from one secondary carbon to another secondary carbon. These two secondary carbons are so similar in energy level that a hydride shift is not likely to occur here. Once again, the second criteria for a carbocation rearrangement is that the rearrangement makes the molecule more stable, and a secondary carbocation is not more stable than another secondary carbocation, generally speaking. Let's go on to our third and final example. Sometimes, there just isn't a hydrogen available to perform the shift such that a carbocation is formed that's more favorable. In these cases, sometimes a methyl substituent will actually perform the same rearrangement. In this example, you can see that there is indeed a carbocation intermediate, and there is a way to perform a shift such that the carbocation changes its location to become more stable. However, we can't use a hydrogen to do this because there simply aren't any hydrogens available. The only thing available to perform the shift is a methyl group, and in this case, that's exactly what's going to happen, which is why we call this a 1,2 methyl shift. Just like the example with the hydrogen, the carbocation acts as an electrophile, and the bond between the carbon in the main chain and the carbon in the methyl group acts as a center for electron density, and hence is a nucleophile. The methyl group gladly switches which carbon it's bound to, and the carbocation is rearranged into a more stable position. So this is an example of a 1,2 methyl shift. One final point that's very important to bring up. We call these 1,2 hydride shifts and 1,2 methyl shifts for a very important reason. That's because when we're numbering on the chain, the shifts can only happen with adjacent carbons. So a carbocation in position three could only move and rearrange such that that positive charge moves to position two or position four. It cannot move more than one space. A hydrogen on one side of the molecule cannot rearrange all the way down the chain to stabilize a carbocation, nor can a methyl group rearrange all the way down the chain to stabilize a carbocation. It is for this reason that we call these 1,2 hydride shifts and 1,2 methyl shifts, because it emphasizes the fact that these shifts only occur on adjacent carbons to the initial carbocation. I will provide a worksheet in the description below with some more complicated examples of carbocation rearrangements. It's a good idea to work through that, and the answers will also be posted below. If you have any questions, please post a comment here, and if you've noticed any mistakes in the video, please let me know as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.